All right, everybody, Baron here, and welcome back to Tab. So in the last video, we showed off what a Roman faction might look like, and look at this. There has been an update. We have a right and proper pike phalanx, because look at the way they're holding their spears. Granted, there's always the derpy McDerperson that's just, like, not holding formation, but the fact that the front row has their pikes down and the back rows have their pikes up is just indicative of a proper Macedonian phalanx that would make Alexander the Great so proud. But we have an update to the patch that is not only adding the Macedonians and altering the Romans and the Greek factions. Look at this poor Roman centurion getting stabbed in what looks like the face, man. That's brutal. These... These phalanx men had no problem cutting down these- these Roman centurions. Granted, there were a lot more of them, so hold on. Alright, so what we did was we put Praetorians on one side and the Centurion cohorts on the other. The cohorts are kind of like the better soldiers. We've got spears and pylum being thrown either which way. Whoa, this dude took one to the brain and he's still going, man. I guess the Roman military prowess exceeds it. But these are not the most advanced or newest factions added, no. We have the Napoleonic faction, and the phalanx here seems to be darn near invincible. We still have issues with the, uh, what looks like the hitboxes on some of these projectiles. And there's accuracy issues for those who are throwing them, but you know what? The phalanx is here, boys, and look at those fantastic beers. Ooh, that guy took a spear straight to the face. There's only one left. This poor guy, you're outmaneuvered, outmanned, and outweaponed. Because you're not outgunned, no. You'd have to be French to be outgunned. Wait a second. This is... This is the French army? Two trumpeteers and a... <laughs> the sound effects are perfect. It looks like they're having a rave in the middle of the battlefield while spears are coming in. <laughs> oh my god, I love it. Oh, th th those poor French musicians were cut down. I don't they didn't take down anybody. Well, you guys may not be sticking in formation very well, but that is a, a line of long, sharp sticks. And the French are like, hey, anything you can do, we can do too. And, uh, you know, they, they can because this is the bayonet charge. Look at that. It's a little bit difficult to see on the background, but look at that. Is that these magnifique? All right, so let's see how the French bayonetters do against a pike phalanx. Oh, they're, they're doing fairly well. Granted, they are outnumbered, but that little bit of charge, and look at this. It's our three favorite guys, the drummer and the two trumpeteers here. Isn't there a name for a French trumpet? Like the little one? <laughs> I forget what it's called, man. I, I, I swear there's a, a funny sounding... I don't know. I'm no musician. Now, Napoleon was an artilleryman. That's kind of like how he first saw action from what I understand. And look at this! Oh my god, this is gonna be fantastic! Cannons versus... Oh! And once again... They're not 100% accurate. Oh my gosh. And yeah, I know. Haha, <laughs> they're totally accurate, right? Anyway. <laughs> oh my gosh. Napoleon, watch out for the sharp spears, brother. You're gonna- you're gonna die. Oh! Look at that. Oh, man! The shrapnel. It'd be really cool to have cannons that could do solid shot, or exploding shot, or like shrapnel shot. So the general has a sword and a pistol. Oh my god. You live a blessed life, Napoleon, don't you? All right, so let's see. I'm charging these guys. Fire! I missed. Oh, I took a... <laughs> Looks like I took a spear to the head. I can't tell if I got him, but this, my friends, is Napoleon. And he is joined by the beautiful and amazing, the magnifique French. Now, from watching Braveheart, you gotta know that long, sharp, pointy sticks are gonna be really good at stopping cavalry. But Napoleon here wants to try out his cuirassi- cuirassier? Uh, the dude's on the horses with the little, with the little, um... Ooh, the first guy took a few spears with the long, sharp, ahem, sabers. So I want to see just how good they are, or how bad they are, at dealing with the pike phalanx. Oh my god. <laughs> Alright, it's a wedge formation, but these guys are dragoons, and... 
what are you doing? There are musket balls flying all over the place. Uh, they've got these little... <laughs> they've got muskets and swords. However, they did take out what looks like four to six of the pikemen before they crash into lines. Now, I also made their formation a little bit more robust. There's a few more units. Now they're, they're like, it's a wall of dead horses that they are on right now. Oh, PETA would be so upset. Oh, so many French horses. Oh, look at this guy. What are you doing? Your, your gun. Oh, oh, wow. They're not the most accurate, I'll tell you that much. And they're still getting defeated. The Macedonian Pike Phalanx seems to just be the best. And uh, these guys aren't the most accurate. Look at, look, they're literally shooting up in the air. All right, boys, you ready for this one? <laughs> That's a very interesting uh, strategy you guys got here. Use the other guy as armor, I guess. This is French line infantry. Oh my God. I, my frames just went to nothing. And I'd say 80 to 90% of the Macedonians have fallen to the first salvo of line infantry. Oh, this guy took a, a spear. He's still doing okay. I'm curious to see if they fight with bayonets when they get closer. Oh my god, this just looks and sounds like Mountain Blade Napoleonic Wars. Now, if you ever played that or if you're just familiar with uh, Empire Total War or, uh, you know, units of the era, this is light infantry and you can see that they don't have bayonets. These are not frontline soldiers. They're kind of like supplementary or auxiliary forces. Now, I'm wondering if they are able to fire a little bit longer. Oh, they do really well up here. All right, so let's see if they have the range to fire from up here. Gentlemen, you may fire when ready. Oh, they definitely have it. Let's see, how accurate were they? I don't see any infantry that fell. What? Maybe they can't aim down. Oh no, they're taking, they must not be doing enough damage. This is gonna be really interesting to see all of these spearmen try to fit up this doorway. It's, this is the siege, gentlemen. Oh no, they just, they're like, screw this. What are you doing? You're giving up your strategic advantage. Oh no, all these poor little Frenchies are gonna get wrecked in this hallway. This is absolute chaos. All right, we need to, we need to alter this. All right, so we spice it up. We have dragoons who have their sabers, and then we've got line infantry. Oh my god, immediate shots out. Oh! Yeah, that salvo was pretty damaging. Oh my god. So many of the Macedonians there took out, and this guy is walking backwards. So that's not how you do it. I think line infantry just seem to be a little bit better. The dragoons are also pretty good. <laughs> oh my gosh. Seeing these guys get hit with the incoming spears is awesome, but look at this. Oh my gosh. This guy, these guys are stuck. And there's even a spear, like they're making teepees out of the spears. Native American faction confirmed. That would be awesome. I would love a Native American faction. All right, so since these guys are red, they kind of look more British, don't they? Don't mind the uniforms. They're red at heart, as you can see. So they're gonna be fighting a Napoleonic column here of bayonet charges. There's also a few cuirassiers here. Uh, and yeah, my French is not very good. This guy just took a cannon to the face and he's flopping over. But the cavalry here, yeah, they, they've been augmented by an artillery piece. Uh-oh. This, this is not gonna work. I think the cavalry alone... Ah! Oh! <laughs> that was awesome. Okay, but yeah, so instead of like lining up a lot of times, like, from what I've, I've read and seen in that, that movie with uh, Ned Stark, who played, uh, you know, the guy? It was where, like, it was Sharp's Rifles. The, it was a Bernard Cornwall book. Anyway, that the French would often attack in a column formation and they would charge the enemy. Uh, it seems like you take a lot of losses, but at the same time, if your horses are able to charge through these stairs, you know, I think you'll be able to take over the victory here. So, the French, oh, Napoleon. All right, how about no horses? I wanna see if these guys are able to get through this just like, oh man. The cannon went all the way through the line and hit the very last unit. Now why is he aiming that way? Is this part of his reload mechanism? That just, that doesn't seem smart. 
Oh my god, he fired diagonally backwards! Oh! <laughs> they finally got here and they're getting cut down. I don't even think- No, nope, no, nope, Napoleon is still alive. Look at him watching. Oh, this is a disgrace. However, his guys are gonna be better at melee combat because they've got their bayonets out. What was that? Oh, the cannon's still alive. Hold on. Napoleon, you gotta- Oh, all right, we gotta take this guy out. Woo! Charge them! Don't shoot me with that cannonball. Yes! Oh my god, I got the last shot, I guess. How many bayonet soldiers survived? Enough! So, would you say it was a Pyrrhic victory? Yes. But it was a victory nonetheless. And the French have taken the glorious victory. Well, Napoleon has gone and done it again. He wants to take over the world and he's going through. So you can see that the local shogun here has rallied his finest forces. The Japanese are here to stop the aggression of the French imperialists. And uh, so let's see how they do. Um, remember that the samurai should be able to block some musket balls. And, you know, we had to bring in everybody's favorite drum line band here. Oh my god. Yeah, they're able to block, uh, musket shots. <laughs> that guy got took a shuriken to the face as he was retreating. But I really think that just the firepower- look at this. All these samurai were cut down. They do have a few firework archers. I think the Japanese are gonna have to request help from the Chinese and the Koreans if they're able to stop this because the first battle went to Napoleon. So I believe it was the Chinese or the Koreans that had the Chuko Nu, which are the semi-automatic crossbows. And then we have the Lady Red Jades here with their giant, I think they're Naginatas, but is that the Japanese term? There's a Chinese term and a Japanese term for weapons that are very similar. I know that there's a difference, but I don't know it that well. But they have joined here. This is a Pan-Asian alliance to fight the imperialistic French. The Chuko news have been fired. This one took one to the face. Oh my gosh. Those are definitely helping to stop the French here. We actually have a right and proper samurai charge here going after these line infantry who weren't able to reload in time. This is the this is the last samurai. Oh man, Napoleon's out here fighting. Red Jade is just going crazy, messing everybody up. We've got a little drummer boy here. The little drummer boy from was it the Christmas song? Uh whoa, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. How many arrows, or excuse me, crossbow bolts do you have? <laughs> Look at this! They were able to stop him! Napoleon has been stopped in his tracks. And this is the last unit. <laughs> this is Napoleon right here. <laughs> He's literally getting kicked out of the Dynasty Faction's domain, and that's all she wrote for him. Oh, yeah. Don't you know this about history? When Napoleon disappears, he comes back. He, he just almost always does. Well, you gotta remember that the three musketeers were French, right? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Look at this guy's neck. So we have uh, some proper uh, musketeers who aren't carrying any muskets. No, they're, they're carrying regular rapiers, uh, which are like the little small swords that, you know, the French like so much. Oh, this poor man is getting... Kerbal space programmed into the abyss right there. I do not want to be him. This guy is catapulting over their lines. This is awesome. I can't tell if he was uh, kicked by a Taekwondo person or if an explosive arrow went off. Oh, he was able to dodge all of that. One of the Jade Warriors is in the river. You know, that does not bode well for her. She's probably out of this one. And, and there's Napoleon guarded by, oh my gosh, drummers. That's all he has. He needs- he needs a personal bodyguard, doesn't he? Well, he was joined by a small reinforcement of Italian halberd men and some French, uh, saber officers. I don't know how to say it in French. On foot! So, oh my gosh, man. Oh, I love it, dude! The Chuko News are probably still my favorite unit in the game. <laughs> how did you get here, sir? Oh my gosh, the Taekwondo... Oh no, that was a lot of uh, pan-Asian forces right there. But I'm wondering if these Italian halberdmen 
are gonna be able to do much. Come on, boys. Stay together. Oh, no! They're falling all over the place. People have been hit by rockets. I hear a Chuko new over here. It still looks like this French force is getting wrecked. I think they're gonna have to get some reinforcements from Greece. Look at how this guy's holding his sword. <laughs> okay. Never mind. Don't look because he is gone. Oh my gosh. Dude. This is just impressive. All right, the forces have been changed up a little bit. The Athenians come in to reinforce. The Macedonians are... Okay, that's special. The Macedonians are here, and the Spartans are here with their hoplite shield wall, and they got a couple slingers, and Leonardo da Vinci is leading these Italian reinforcements himself, and Napoleon has brought in some artillery. However, the Pan-Asian Alliance has brought in a Hawacha. So, let's just see how good this is. I'm hoping- oh, there goes the first cannonball. Hold on, let's see where that's gonna impact. Oh, no. Oh my- what?! Did you see that? The bravest samurai in the world just blocked that, and it was double blocked. Is it gonna explode right here? Oh my god, it did! <laughs> that's just obscene! So... The cannonball explodes upon impact. It was blocked by two samurai and hit probably some of the most valuable soldiers, the Chuko Nu, with their semi-automatic crossbows. That's just like the wildest thing I think I've seen. Oh, these French uh, swordsmen are getting wrecked right here by the firework archers. Uh, this area here... Ooh, this is actually gonna be really good because I think the Spartans... If they work properly, look at this, look at this. A Spartan shield wall versus a bunch of Chuko Nu. And look at that, they're all firing at center of mass, so one hoplite is able to absorb all of these incoming crossbow bolts. This does not bode well for the Pan-Asian Alliance. Dude, the reinforcements from Greece and Macedon, I think, are just pushing it over the edge. Look at this, the Italians are here too? Wait a minute, weren't the Italians also Romans? Oh no. And this guy's gonna fall off the back of the map here. And the Spartans know all about fighting. And that guy fell. Who's left alive, boys? Nobody is. Well... I'll tell you what. Napoleon was pretty upset to learn that when he called for all of Europe to join him on his conquest, the Viking faction of Scandinavia did not show up. So he is bringing his best soldiers, his line infantrymen, to deal his vengeance upon them. And oh my god, look at that. That was actually a really cool formation and they've lost most of them. Now, what the Vikings are gonna need to do is get their berserkers to jump in the lines. I think that's the only thing. They've got some headbutters that are chasing Napoleon backwards. Oh, there we go. The berserkers got in here. Some of them anyway did. And they're chopping through the lines as best they can. There's a headbutter here, and the shield wall is here as well. They've got some frost archers, so let's see if Scandinavia, the Vikings, can stop good old Napoleon from taking over the world. He's already taken over Asia. He's using his Italian and Greek levies, his mercenaries, to conquer the known world. And this is the problem. When you have a slow reloading musket, I guess it's not much of a problem, actually. Because there's not too many units left. There's only a few, uh, what are you, shield warriors here. And look at this. Oh man, all the archers got digging down. Well, vengeance was Napoleon's. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Jalal Sama's Greek to the Napoleon Age mod. Now, this was cool because a while back, Landfall teased the Napoleonic faction, so it's been fun to play it. I hope they do come in the game. We don't know. But anyway, guys, thanks for watching another episode of Tabs. Let me know if you want to see more, and I'll see you guys in the next video.